All right, everybody, welcome back to some more Lifeline. Thank you guys for joining me for another episode. Um, if you guys didn't watch the last episode, we uh, ventured back or heading back to the Varia after deciding to uh, not go towards the peak anymore. We have stopped at another one of the abandoned spaceships along the way to make camp. We are currently inside. Taylor actually has hurt himself. He says he's wrenched his shoulder. So hopefully that's not something too severe, but we are now inside the ship. We have shimmied inside and now we've got a choice to try one of the hallways. Um, and Taylor responds with fair enough, the East Hall or the West Hall. I'm literally too exhausted to remember all the words to any, meeny, miny, mo. So I'm leaving this up to you. I went ahead and chose the West Hall. Turning left, he says, we head down the lovely, not lovely, and spacious, definitely not spacious, west hallway. On either side of me is a sealed door. Without any power to get behind the pneumatics, I don't stand a chance in hell at getting these open. There's an open door at the end of the hall. That's where I'm headed. Jeez, it's just barely open enough for me to slip inside the next room. I'd better hope there's not a buffet on the other side. If I gain an ounce, I'll never get back through. <laughs> Taylor is busy. All right, so I don't know, maybe 20 minutes have gone by or so. Oh, he says, they should have sent in a contortionist, not a science student. Anyhow, I'm in. This looks like a pretty basic sick bay. I say that because I found a med kit in here. And inside the med kit was a bottle, a large bottle labeled in both Mandarin and English, so I can tell it was painkillers, which I thought, yay, because my shoulder hurts like there is no tomorrow. There may be legitimately be no tomorrow, fun thought. But the bottle is almost empty. It would make a nice mac uh, maraca, but there were only three pills in it. I'm not here to judge, but someone on the ship must have had a pretty serious problem or else they downed a whole bunch of pills rather than face whatever brought the ship down. That's kind of scary. Nope, that's officially too dark. Not gonna think in that direction, he says. My shoulder is freaking killing me. I could certainly justify taking one of these pills now to make things easier, but then again, things could always get worse later. I might want to hang on to him. This was the choice now where I could tell him to go ahead and take one now or hold off. He just hurt his shoulder. I mean, I can see, you know, if he was in excruciating pain or, you know, something along those lines. But I told him to hold off. He goes, yeah, all right. Maybe that's smart. I'll hang on to the pills for the time being. If the last couple of days have taught me anything, it's that no matter how bad things seem at the moment, they can always get worse later. Crap, the glow rod is fading already. I think I should get out of here before it fails me completely. All right, so about another 20, 30 minutes have gone by as he's ra ra uh, ravaged through that little sick bay and got back outside. All right, back in the main corridor now. The side doors down the opposite hallway are sealed too, but the facing door at the end is ajar. It's, uh, it's not open wide enough for me to get through, but I can see into the room. It's a galley, a lot smaller than the one on the Varia, and it looks like the inside of the galley themed snow globe after someone shook it violently. Everything is everywhere, just strewn all over the place. MREs just waiting to disappoint someone's palate. Hmm, MREs, huh? That could be good. I'm way too tired tonight to try and bash my way through that door. But the idea of eating something besides rat food is pretty freaking compelling, and tomorrow is another door bashing day. I went ahead and told him to go back to the main hall. Let's get some sleep. The MREs aren't going to go anywhere. We can get him a good night's sleep, and then we can go back to door bashing. He goes, good grief. There's enough junk thrown around in here that I could probably build myself a jaunty robot companion out of spare parts. If I knew much about building robots or programming them to be jaunty... Sorry, I tripped over something and went down hard. Oh God, please don't get hurt. And uh, despite everything you may have read in space, you can definitely hear yourself scream. And it's a little embarrassing. But the good news is the thing I tripped over, it's another little generator. It's a different model than the one I've got back at the Varia, powering the beacon a little smaller, a little lighter. But in essence, I've just doubled my power supply. 
See there, good things come to those who go bumbling around in a derelict nightmare ships. Apart from those halls and their barely open doors, nowhere else in the ship is open to explore other than what's left of the flight deck. Like I said, the instrument panels are trashed. Not that this caravel was ever in danger of taking off again with that whole missing its engine problem. But it looks like it's all wrecked. Guidance, communications, Waldo controls, the whole nine yards. The whole eight meters and change. Well, except maybe I spoke too soon. There's a, looks like a proximity alarm. Panel appears to be intact. God knows whether the rest of the hardware is functional. I don't think I really need an alarm system, not like the ship is parked in a high crime neighborhood. Plus, that means figuring out how to hook the system up to the generator. And that's if the thing even works, which is a big if. What do you think? So I told him just to go to sleep. I mean, I don't think we need a proximity alarm. So I went ahead and um, told him to go to sleep. I'm with you. I think it'd be a waste of time, effort, and light, all of which are in pretty short supply around here. I'm betting down instead. The ship really must have been designed for a small crew, only a single mission specialist seat up here, half uprooted, which in fact seems to be my most comfortable option as far as sleeping arrangements go around here. I figure it's time to call it a night. Only got two glow rods left, no sense of cracking another one now. I've sealed over the airlock door, and I've got enough blankets to swaddle myself and hopefully beat the cold. Taylor is busy, and he's gone to sleep for the night. So, all right, guys. Well, we're going to wrap this up here. He's hunkered down inside of a very small spaceship. He's got a couple of Mylar blankets. We know we've got MREs in one of those rooms, so I think this would be a very, very good situation for Taylor. And we're going to let him get some sleep. Generally, when he sleeps, it is about an eight-hour real-time process. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up here. Thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you when Taylor returns.